Welcome Age of Vintage Society. Dolores Del Rio was a talented actress that exudes nobility and class in her roles. However, this didn't stop her from appearing in scandalous films. Her sensual body and skill showed she had the potential to be great for a longer period of time. However, Hollywood had other plans. How Dolores Del Rio wrecked anyone's happiness for hers. As you all know how much I appreciate you, my viewers, so I want to thank you for your generous comments and for the Patreons. This video would not have been possible without you, and thanks to those who watched the video right to the end. Subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. The most beautiful face in Hollywood. The two most beautiful things in the world are the Taj Mahal and Dolores Del Rio. The playwright George Bernard Shaw said about her, although her beauty didn't save her from the long claws of Hollywood that rendered her into being, she came to understand the nature of Hollywood. She said, Hollywood, what a place it is. It is so far away from the rest of the world, so narrow. No one thinks of anything but motion pictures or talks of anything else. And I, too, am getting like the rest. I have not read anything for a year. I do not know what is happening in the world. Hollywood will eat you, chew you, and spit you out. Tinseltown has a way of heightening negativity, leaving its stars lost in its glowing darkness. Not many can get away, but Dolores did after living through terrible periods of life. However, she can't blame Hollywood for everything. Some of it was her doing, especially when she cheated on her husband. Although the cheating was to further her Hollywood career. OK, so maybe you can blame Hollywood for this. Dolores Del Rio dreamed of life among the stars and coming from an aristocratic family. It is easy to see where this feeling comes from. So imagine her delight when Edwin Carew, a filmmaker from Hollywood, discovered her at an aristocratic party. Eddie, blown away by her effortless beauty and smouldering elegance, began to talk to her about Hollywood and her potential to hit fame. She too longed for it. Her young life had been a series of sadness, and this seemed like the break she needed. The first of her tragedies would be her living through a revolution when she was younger. It was rough as her father left her and her mother, despite all of them being targets of the revolutionaries, due to them being members of the aristocracy, her father sought asylum in America. Although left to fend for themselves, Dolores and her mother rose to their occasion. They defied the odds in their journey to Mexico to get to safety. The two dressed in drab clothing belied their aristocratic origins as they hopped from one train to the other till they reached Mexico City. Their journey seemed like something from a suspense-filmed telenovela. In 1921, she found joy in a fiery romance that would eventually burn out. In 1921, when she was in her late teens, she fell in love and entered a whirlwind romance with the incredibly wealthy 34-year-old cotton dealer, Jaime Martinez del Rio. The two met at a highbrow party for the elites, and their passion for each other was mutual. They married after a two-month-long courtship and travelled to Europe, where her new husband had some influence. The two had a two-year honeymoon filled with different high points, such as meeting the leading personalities of the Spanish royal family. Their return home in 1924 would have been uneventful if not for the fact they came to meet Miss Fortune. Del Rio's husband's business crumbled spectacularly owing to the cotton market crash of 1924. As if that loss wasn't enough, she would lose her growing pregnancy to miscarriage. And there's more. The doctors broke to Del Rio news that rooted her to the spot. They told her that she wouldn't be able to carry a pregnancy and would never attempt to get pregnant again as it could lead to her death if she did. So, can you now see why the prospect of Hollywood excited her? It was an escape from sadness. It was an escape she would have denied if only she knew the cost. Hollywood can be greedy. For the fame it provides, it takes peace and restraint away. Dolores Del Rio has elegance and true character written all over her. Still, when Hollywood's influence seeped into her, she cheated. And even when she left Hollywood, she wrecked another person's happiness for hers. Blaming Hollywood is easy. Could it be that there was darkness within the elegant star already? 
Was this why the Mexican spitfire Lupe Velez referred to the elegant Dolores as a bird of bad omen? Did Lupe see something other people didn't see at the time? Sadly, we can't ask the delectable Velez if something else powered their rivalry. Their rivalry was intense, with name-calling and Lupe mocking Dolores's elegance in public. Lupe had a troublemaking streak in her, and she never cared if Del Rio was present or not. She did things to spite her. How did the ethereal Dolores respond to these provocations? She didn't. Lupe had successfully cowed her. Their rivalry went on as Lupe felt Dolores was encroaching on her territory. In Hollywood, where uniqueness was key, having another sultry Mexican to compete with threatened Lupe. But it's Lupe. She fought with other female stars too. It was her thing. But meek Dolores, who survived death at the hands of revolutionaries when she was younger, felt scared. The Hispanic superstar actress was born on August 3, 1904, in Durango City, Mexico, as Maria de los Dolores Asonsolo y López Negret. Her parents were the cream of the crop, with her father being the son of the rich and influential, and he was also the director of the Bank of Durango. Her mother was also the daughter of a wealthy family with ties to Spanish nobility. Artistry ran in her blood, as on both sides of her family there were actors and a sculptor, also, there was a social activist on her father's side. No wonder the Enchantress participated in numerous social causes. The family's wealth and social position temporarily disappeared during the Mexican Revolution. They escaped the revolution separately, but reunited in Mexico, where they soon regained their wealth and status. Dolores would soon resume attending aristocratic parties and school, of course, the amazing Latina went to the College Francais de Saint-Joseph. In 1919, when she was a teen, she went to watch a ballet performance by Russian ballerina Anna Pavlova. The performance opened her mind, and she decided to become a dancer in the heat of that inspiration. She began to train as a ballerina, but felt insecure about her body and her ability. In response to her daughter's insecurity, her mother commissioned a portrait of her. The portrait captured the best parts of Dolores, and even she was blown away by her elegance. Her insecurity disappeared, as if it had never existed in the first place. But things didn't go as planned for her. She got married early to a 34-year-old man, and while the first few years of the marriage were sweet, things turned sour. Then Edwin Carew, a popular director in Hollywood, came around. He had visited Mexico to attend a wedding, but he was given the gift of seeing the glamorous actress perform alongside her husband. Del Rio danced as her husband played the piano. Carew loved the lady's talent, but he loved more than that. He had fallen for her like a rock tumbling down a canyon. Carew spoke to the couple and convinced them that they had a place in Hollywood. Her husband, Jane, was convinced they had a place, and that while his wife became an actress, he would work on becoming a screenwriter. Jane pictured a dramatic improvement in his economic status, but as Mr. Del Rio would learn, Hollywood didn't work like that. First, the couple dealt with the disapproval of family members who believed aristocrats don't sell themselves the way the two were about to, but they didn't listen. Off they went to Tinseltown. True to his word, Carew began to get his new star roles using his connections. The Latina beauty debuted in Jonah, a silent film that hit theatres in 1925. The film was a romantic film, and she only got a five-minute appearance. Carew doubled his efforts, but Del Rio had begun to see cracks in his posturing as a Samaritan. The man had an unhealthy fixation with her beauty. She appeared in a comedy, Pals First, released in 1926, and she got a prominent role. Her acting fortunes improved as she starred in the commercially successful film What Price Glory?, this broke her out and earned her a selection as a Wampus Baby star. Soon she had roles in The Loves of Carmen, Resurrection and Trail of 98. Her talent was undeniable and because of the resultant popularity, the serpent of jealousy bit her husband and poured venom into him. Jane became jealous and since his fortune still remained bad, he was mostly at home and he felt less of a man. He complained about being Mrs Del Rio and the marriage, which had been shaking since her miscarriage, got to the point where romance bled out. The two of them filed for separation, never to return together as Jaime died six months later 
while he was in Europe. When this happened, Carew thought it was his time to make a move, and he became more aggressive toward the star. She was dealing with his unwanted attention while trying to prove to Hollywood execs that she could also make the transition to talking films. She and other silent film actors under the name United Artists proved their mettle. The song Ramona, which she sang, showed film execs her voice would be an excellent addition to their talking films. However, she didn't get this faster than she would have liked. This is because her unreturned love for Carew fully disrupted their relationship. The United Artists saw through Carew. The man had set plans to see him and Dolores tie the knot. He even divorced his wife so he would be free to do whatever he wanted. United Artists told Del Rio to part ways with Carew, and she listened to them, but the exclusive contract she had with Carew proved difficult to break. It became a big court issue and the two parties had to settle out of court, but Carew's ego was hurt. As a master of publicity, he began a campaign against her, the worst form of campaign. He spread many negative rumours against her, but he wasn't done. He replaced Dolores with Lupi Velez when he wanted to make the sound version of Resurrection. Delay isn't denial. Despite Carew's best efforts, she got a talking movie, the bad one, and the film was an immense success, both critically and commercially. Dolores's accent with English made her a unique actress filmmakers sought after. Success at the theatres was not the only thing that came to Dolores in 1930. She returned to the romance scene when she met Cedric Gibbons, MGM's artistic director. The two met at a party, courted and dated in 1930. They became the biggest couple in Hollywood, but they couldn't have much of a honeymoon as Dolores had a kidney infection, which kept her in bed. This illness didn't dim her shine, and she became an RKO actress exclusively when she recovered. The film she shot with them, phew, they were loin-stirring. Birds of Paradise, which she did along with Joel McCree, and Flying Down to Rio were two of the most salacious movies she did for them. Bird of Paradise got positive reviews, but the nude scenes caused a stir upon release. Flying Down to Rio resulted from a successful prior film, Girl of the Rio, which was the actress's first film with them. The two-piece bikini which she wore in that made that kind of bikini popular. However, her success with RKO was short-lived, as the studio had economic problems which prevented them from renewing the star's contract. After leaving RKO, Jack Warner of Warner Brothers gave the actress roles in two films, Wonder Bar and Madame du Barry. Wonder Bar was a hit at the box office, but Madame du Barry was another scandalous film that the Hayes Code heavily censored. From Warner she did films for Universal Studios and 20th Century Fox, but it seemed Hollywood had had too much of her. The films failed at the box office, and Gibbons tried to use his connections with MGM to get Del Rio films, but it wasn't enough. To the guys at MGM she was a pretty face and nothing more. She became a target for the media, who labelled her a box office poison. She faced loss, but it was a new kind of loss, a kind she wasn't used to. It was during this period that she met Orson Welles, and the two did the unacceptable. They began an affair while Del Rio was still married to Gibbons. Just her luck that Gibbons found out, and he divorced her. Her relationship with Orson continued, so when the blowback from Orson Welles's controversial movie, Citizen Kane, came, it tanked her reputation, and the studio yanked her from the film she was in. Shortly after, she ended things with Orson, who was sleeping behind her. Hollywood had closed its doors on her, it had used her, and was done with her. When her father died, she knew it was time to return to her birth country, Mexico, and her return to Mexico coincided with the rise of the Mexican movie industry, and she fit right in. Experience abound, although she also had to deal with a stalker too. Emiliano Fernandez fell in love with her and got her to feature in her film Flor Silvestre, but his love remained his love and she didn't return it. The peak of her Mexican career was the 1946 film Maria Candelaria, as the film was a worldwide sensation. She began to date Lewis Riley, the millionaire playboy who was in a relationship with the legendary Betty Davis. The two dated for a long while and married in 1959, and they were together till the end of her days. 
After her long break from Hollywood, she returned to play a motherly role in the 1960 film Flaming Star. She was the mother of the character Elvis Presley played. Then she had a small role in 1964's Cheyenne Autumn. Despite appearing in films that were successful at the box office, it was when she returned to Mexico that she began to get awards. She won the Ariel Awards for Las Abandonadas. Her film La Malcarida got an award for the Best Photography Award at the Venice Festival. She even got her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. For someone who people touted to be a narcissist, Dolores cares about people and has participated in various charitable activities. She founded the Society for the Protection of Artistic Treasures of Mexico. She created a charity body to help take care of the kids of the entertainers in the National Association of Actors. However, it was when she received an invitation to the 1983 Oscars, but she died shortly after the invitation. Two years before, she got an infected injection of vitamins. The injection was infected with hepatitis B. A few years after, her liver failed, and she met her demise at 78 years old. Latin women have always been a phenomenon in Hollywood. How Margarita Cancino became Rita Hayworth. Watch this video and find out. <laughs> 